On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to wire two single pole light switches inside a two gang J box controlling two light fixtures separately with one power going in this two gang J box. Stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Just a disclaimer, all the electrical videos that I make on this channel is for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. The electrical code in my area may be different from your electrical code in your area. So always make sure that your codes are always up to date because codes are constantly changing in different areas. So make sure you have the right permits to do any type of electrical work. Again, electricity is very, very dangerous. Make sure that you turn off the power from your circuit breaker whenever working with electricity. And if you feel uncomfortable working with any type of electrical work, please hire a professional certified electrician. With that being said, all my disclaimers, full disclaimer detail is on the description down below. So check that out. With that being said, let's get to the video. Here are some of the tools that I'll be using throughout this whole video. You can either use uh, old work J box or junction box. This is a two gang, meaning that you can put two uh, switches on there. And this one you can just put and screw onto the studs, cut a hole on your drywall and insert it that way. Or if you have exposed studs, you can use this new work, which is same thing. It comes with two nails. So when you're looking at your J box, make sure you always look inside for the useful information. Like for here today, we're going to be using a 14 gauge, which is perfect for light fixtures. Um, you have 14. These are the gauges on the right side, 14 gauge, 12 and 10 gauge. And if you look at the left, these are the number of wires that can go inside this box. So if you're using a 14 gauge, we can only fit 16 wires in there. So if we're using a 14 two, there's about three wires in there, which is the neutral hot and the ground. So you can just do the math. And if you look on the very top, this is 32 cubic inches in volume. Just make sure also that you have this label right here, which is UL certified. So I'll be using this insulated screwdriver today. This is pretty cool. It's a flip blade. So we have our Phillips on one end and you can switch it up onto a flat head and it clicks like that. And to loosen it, it just pretty much pops out. And one of the useful tools that I'll be using today and show you is this volt claw. This is awesome for twisting wires. We're going to be using this loop right here to twist some uh, wire loops. You can use this to wrench up and I'll, use, I'll show you all the, the how to use these on this video. And most importantly, never forget to use your voltage detector. Even though you turn off the power from your breaker, always use this as a secondary and double check to see if there's no voltage running through that wire. The two switches that I'll be using today is both 15 amps. These are single pole switches, both 15 amp. It's rated right here. If you look on the label, it'll say 15 a, they might be both different in color, but they're pretty much the works the same way. You can see that they are single pole because they both have hot terminals right there Two hot terminals, a ground wire. We are going to be using a 15 amp 14 two cable because it's going to be running on a 15 amp power. So compared to the old wire nuts where you twist, these are awesome. I prefer using these ones because they are really easy to use. They are lever. You know, you can use them as a lever and just insert your wire, flip them down and easy as that. You don't have to twist anything, twist any wire and your wires will remain straight and you can just pull these out and save them for future use. Again, all the tools that I use on this video, I'll leave it on the description down below. So before working with electricity, make sure you turn off the power from your breaker and double check everything with this voltage detector. So notice that when you put it right here, it's not beeping, but when it is live, which I'll show you later on when we turn back the power, that it will start beeping. Here I have my mock-up all set up for you friends. All right, this one's missing a bulb. I'll put a bulb on that later. But as you can see, this is where the power, I put some labels. We are gonna be using 14 to two wire with ground, okay? 14 to wire. So that's mostly what a white wire, 14 gauge. And as you can see, there are three wires in this cable. This power source, if you're asking, is gonna be coming off the breaker using a 15 amp 
breaker. If you already have 12.2 cable running to your light fixtures and to your J box, you can use 12.2 on a 15 amp breaker, but do not use a 14.2 cable on a 20 amp. It will just overheat, okay? Don't do that. All right, so what we're gonna be using today is a 14.2 on a 15 amp breaker. So I'll leave it all the information up here and you can pause it as you go so you don't get confused. I have these 14.2 cables both running on separate light fixtures. I just mock, this is just a mock up. These are just put here for demonstration purposes. And obviously you're supposed to nail these down all the way, but this is just a mock up like what I mentioned. Feed this through this two gang new work J box. That being said, I'm just gonna nail these down. Not all the way, cause it's just for demonstrational purposes only. Let's feed this inside the J box. Again, sometimes these things are really hard to push down. There you have it, we got about six inches of wire. We can measure it. So that's about six inches in there. Now that we got both of these two cables from the light fixture going to this two gang J box. We're now going to feed our power source inside this J box as well. So there you have it. Again, I'm all about recap on this video. I might sound repetitive, but I like to make everything clear and uh, visual for you friends. So we have our power source 14 2, two wire with ground running to the two gang J box. I have two light fixtures, both with 14 2 already stripped both of their 14-2 wires going inside this two gang uh, J box. And right here, it's not stripped yet. So let me go and show you how to strip using some of the tools that I have. So just strip your wires. Just be very careful not to cut yourself and don't cut the insulation of each wire inside. And then just cut off the excess. There you go. Now we got a little spider thing going on but we know exactly where each one is feeding through. Before you start any work, make it easier for yourself and start installing the pigtails first to make it easier for you. I'm gonna pigtail the two top terminals on each switch, top, top right there, and we're gonna pigtail the ground wire. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the scrap piece of wire here. I got a 14.3 cable that I'm just gonna um, use for pigtail. I'm just going to take my wire cutter since we only want this. We want a hot wire. I'm just going to take about six inches off and we're going to take the ground wire as well. Again, I'm using a 14-2. Make sure when you use pigtails, you use the same size wire that you're going to use with your circuit. Now I have two ground and two hot wires. When we're stripping wire, you want to take about five eighths off the tip. Again, if you don't know that measurement, you can always use the back of this switch. There's a little groove on the back that you can use as reference. See that? Just place it on top and there you can use that and that's how much you can cut. We're just gonna go and strip that off. When you're working with switches, make sure that it's always on the upright position, okay? So you can see, I mean, you can do it upside down or not, but to make it easier for you so you don't get confused, Always look at the wordings on here and make sure that it's on the upright position. You can see that the wording on the top says off. I don't know if you can see it, but it says off and it says on right there. If it says no, just make sure that's upside down. And then we're gonna wire it, the two black wires at the top for pigtail. Let's start off with the black wire first. I'm gonna show you two ways to make the loop. You can use your long nose pliers and then just twist this like that. Just like that, this one's already bent, so I might have to make this one better. Okay, or you can use this tool right here. This is called a volt claw. It has so many functions. You can use this to push wire, pull wire, twist wire. You can maneuver everything because once you get inside the J box, it's so skinny or so tight in there. This acts as a, another extra pair of, you know, hand that you can reach inside there. And you're probably wondering, this is actually acts as a wire nut, um, kind of like a wrench. It's a little hole on there, on here where you can, it says loop. I'm not gonna go all the way in, just a little bit like three quarters of the way in. And I'm just gonna twist it just like that. Two loops, two straights. This is your pigtail. So we're gonna take one of their switches and we're gonna loop it onto the terminal. Again, I'm using one of these insulated 
screwdrivers these are awesome because you can switch it like so flip it and it locks in place when you push it again all the tools that i use on this video i'll leave it under the description down below take your wire hook it on a clockwise position and you are going to just tighten it real well ground again clockwise hook it up on a clockwise position and tighten it up and there you have it we have our two terminals at the top two hot terminals both have pigtails flip it over now you have two ground wires pigtail on each terminal we're going to take our black hot wire coming from the power take our black pigtail from first switch and we're going to attach that boom we're going to take our hot wire from the first light fixture on the left take that hot wire and just like using this one because it works real well okay so hook it up just like that and we are going to tighten that up so imagine this is a mirror we're just going to mirror what we just did here with the other switch so here is our other switch make sure it's in a upright position we're going to take our black pigtail and we are going to attach it with our first switch pigtail and the power so this is the power black wire and we're going to connect that right here so we have power coming to our switch now we're going to take our light fixture from our right side and loop this black wire black wire to our second light fixture on a clockwise position let me go and spread this out so you can see it a lot better so quick breakdown here's our first switch black pigtail on the top terminal going to the power so here's our power right here power source located at the bottom here's that black wire from the power feeding to both first and second switch right here you see the second switch the top pigtail terminal is also located to the power and now the bottom of the first switch the hot line is coming to or it's going to go to the first light fixture okay so there it is feeding to the bottom right there our second switch mirror image bottom the hot wire going to the second light fixture like so okay so hopefully that makes sense again any question that you might have leave a comment on the section below and i'll be glad to help you out on to the next step now this step i'm fairly excited because we're going to be combining all the ground wires there's a total of five ground wires in this box right here so we are going to be using a five lever way go one two three four five Here's a tip make sure that you orientate and uh, run the ground wires in a nice and neat manner don't just put one here there there like kind of like a spider web make sure that they have a nice even flow going to this wire connector so that it makes it easier for you when you start tucking all these wires in I'm gonna go through it in order ground wire from our first switch coming from our first light fixture power ground from that second switch the second light fixture so if you had a wire nut doing that you're going to just have a huge mess that's why i really like using these wire connectors look how look how beautiful and clean that looks all five ground wires going to this lever lastly what's obvious is what's we're left over is our neutral wires one neutral wire from our first light fixture second light fixture neutral wire and neutral wire coming from our power source what we're going to do now is orientate this and connect them all with a three-way wire connector way go style cool first light fixture power source second light fixture and there you have it you can uh, pause the video screen shoot this any way you want i'll try to make it as spread out as possible to make it 
um, easier for you. Pushing in wire, I like to use my volt claw. One end on this volt claw where you use it as a push. Then using your nice soft baby fingers and damaging and poking it through there. You can use this as a alternative and you can use that to push the wire in, you know, help help orientate the wire. And you can also use the other end to twist some wires in there and orient it as the way you want to, okay? So just one of the tools that I keep for wiring. And I find it very, very useful. Okay. So now everything is nice and straight. We are now going to go and wire these top two. These are fairly easy. I'll show you one and then you can kind of get what the other one will look like. Two lever Wago wire connector. Let's start off with the ground wire. And just to uh, let you know, when you're inserting these Wago connectors, make sure that the... Let me zoom in a little bit for you, friends. When you're inserting it, your wire through these Wago connectors, make sure that the wires are touching the top of the ceiling of this lever. Of this wire connector all the way there if you see all the way there that means it's inserted real well and secured in the j box you kind of get the picture already i'm gonna leave that open now you can do the next side so here comes the moment of truth let's go and turn on the first switch this one's controlling the right fixture this one's controlling the left fixture so that's how you pretty much wire it friends they work independently but both are on the same J box, two gang, and one power going through all of them. If you have any questions on any of the wiring, please leave a comment down below. Let me know in the comment section what video you want to see next regarding electrical. And once again, friends, always check with your electrical codes in your area because codes are constantly changing. My electrical code and your electrical code might be different. Make sure you have the right permit to do all this work and all these videos that I make for electricity in my channel is for all for educational informational and entertainment purposes only check out my full disclaimer on the description down below all the tools that i use in this video i'll leave the links on the description down below as well all right friends thank you so much be safe and stay tuned for the next one